How we doing? All right. Is everybody situated? Everybody's good? Okay. All right. Thank you all. I appreciate you all coming today. Um, what I'm going to do is sort of briefly outline and explain why we're here today. Um, and talk about that, and then I'll, I'll, I'll briefly discuss um, the case um, at hand, and then I'll answer any questions um, that, that y'all may have. Um, I appreciate y'all coming today. The, the reason that I called this press conference is first and foremost is to, to sort of outlay the procedures that, will, that, are, that are in place and that will continue to be in place for officer-involved shootings in Greenville County. And it's important for you to know and the community to know that we have a protocol in place on how these things will be looked at, how, there's going to be in the, how they're going to be investigated, to ensure that there is a clear and um, untainted investigation, as well as transparency uh, for the community at large, so that everybody's concerns are taken into consideration, and that we have the ability um, to evaluate and analyze a potential criminal uh, investigation, and that it's done cleanly uh, without, without taint. So. Um, what I'm going to do is lay out sort of the procedures on how that's going to happen. Um, Sheriff Lewis is here uh, as well, that he can answer any questions about this procedure. And we're in agreement on how this is going to work. And then I'll turn it over to, to the officer-involved shooting um, related to Jason Mendez as well, and we can answer questions about that. Um, so first and foremost, um, the most important thing uh, that we discussed when it comes to an officer-involved shooting is that law enforcement is out there to serve and protect, and we, we all agree on that. And they're also there to maintain their own safety and security. Uh, and and that, is, that is first and foremost um, when it comes to their job. They all want to go home every day. And unfortunately, in today's world, uh, violence occurs, violence among, between law enforcement and, and community members and our citizens in Greenville County interact in a violent way, and, and that's a reality of the world that we live in today, unfortunately. So when this happens, and when there is an incident where an officer has to use uh, a weapon, uh, there, is, there, is, there is force used, there's a protocol that will be established every single case. First and foremost, an independent agency will be utilized uh, to, to investigate the, the officer's actions. So if a weapon is used, um, an independent agency. Most likely that's going to be SLED. They're the ones who are going to, going to investigate the, the officer's actions. Um, potential crimes that the officers could have committed is was there excessive force? Did they have the constitutional right, the statutory right to use the force that they used at that particular time? And that's something that there needs to be oversight. And that oversight is through an independent investigator and the solicitor's office. And that's where that's going to stay. Um, SLED will conduct the, conduct the investigation. They will do a thorough investigation as if, as if it is any other criminal investigation. Um, they will um, take statements. They will gather witnesses. They will get all videotapes. There could be videotapes from uh, third-party cameras. There could be um, body cameras. There could be in-car cameras. There could be independent um, iPhone cameras. We don't know. The scenarios are, are limitless on how an incident um, can, can occur. We've seen, we've got a
How we doing? All right. Is everybody situated? Everybody's good? Okay. All right. Thank you all. I appreciate you all coming today. Um, what I'm going to do is sort of briefly outline and explain why we're here today. Um, and talk about that, and then I'll, I'll, I'll briefly discuss um, the case um, at hand, and then I'll answer any questions um, that, that y'all may have. Um, I appreciate y'all coming today, but the reason that I called this press conference is first and foremost is to, to sort of outlay the procedures that, will, that, are, that are in place and that will continue to be in place for officer-involved shootings in Greenville County. And it's important for you to know and the community to know that we have a protocol in place on how these things will be looked at, how, there's going to be in, be, how they're going to be investigated, to ensure that there is a clear and um, untainted investigation, as well as transparency uh, for the community at large, so that everybody's concerns are taken into consideration, and that we have the ability um, to evaluate and analyze a potential criminal uh, investigation that is done cleanly uh, without, without taint. So. Um, what I'm going to do is lay out sort of the procedures on how that's going to happen. Um, Sheriff Lewis is here uh, as well that he can answer any questions about this procedure. And we're in agreement on how this is going to work. And then I'll turn it over to, to the officer-involved shooting um, related to Jason Mendez as well, and we can answer questions about that. Um, so first and foremost, um, the most important thing uh, that we discussed when it comes to an officer-involved shooting is that law enforcement is out there to serve and protect, and we, we all agree on that. And they're also there to maintain their own safety and security. Uh, and and that, is, that is first and foremost um, when it comes to their job. They all want to go home every day. And unfortunately, in today's world, uh, violence occurs, violence among, between law enforcement and, and community members and our citizens in Greenville County interact in a violent way, and, and that's a reality of the world that we live in today, unfortunately. So when this happens and when there is an incident where an officer has to use uh, a weapon, uh, there, is, there, is, there is force used, there's a protocol that will be established every single case. First and foremost, an independent agency will be utilized uh, to, to investigate the, the officer's actions. So if a weapon is used, um, an independent agency. Most likely that's going to be SLED. They're the ones who are going to, going to investigate the, the officer's actions. Um, potential crimes that the officers could have committed is was there excessive force? Did they have the constitutional right, the statutory right to use the force that they used at that particular time? And that's something that there needs to be oversight. And that oversight is through an independent investigator and the solicitor's office. And that's where that's going to stay. Um, SLED will conduct the, conduct the investigation. They will do a thorough investigation as if, as if it is any other criminal investigation. Um, they will um, take statements. They will gather witnesses. They will get all videotapes. There could be videotapes from uh, third-party cameras. There could be um, body cameras. There could be in-car cameras. There could be independent um, iPhone cameras. We don't know. The scenarios are, are limitless on how an incident um, can, can occur. We've, seen, we've got a million examples here in South Carolina right now that we can look at. Those will be obtained by, by SLED as part of the investigation. And then they will, they will continue their investigation. There could be forensics that need to be evaluated. There could be 
videotaping issues that need to be resolved. As we go through that, we will be making a determination as to how we will release information to the community, to the press, and to uh, the victims. There's a FOIA law in South Carolina, so FOIA requires us to respond within 14 days to your FOIA request. Um, however, we may, we may release information much earlier than that. Um, we may not re release it within the 14 days if there's an exception to the FOIA that we can, we can stand on. Um, first and foremost, the investigation has to be clean. Therefore, before information is released to the public, interviews need to be conducted. We've got numerous instances where individuals see a video or see, have information and they are not relevant to the investigation and insert themselves in, inappropriately into investigation. Oh, I saw so and so. I know this. When in fact they, do, they did not or do not. So we want to, to, to keep that from happening. We want to keep the investigation, again, as clean as possible. So SLED will be doing this as, as, they, as quickly as they possibly can, um, oversight by my office and myself, and then when appropriate, we will release videos or certain information that is being requested, oftentimes by the deceased family or by the press or, or, or whatever. What I will do, though, is I'll, I will give a timeline as best as I can on when we, we think we will be able to release information because we do not want to have the appearance that we are hiding something, we are covering anything up, that we are changing anything. Um, and there are multiple sources that are, that are, that are involved in it. SLED is independent. Um, in this particular case, the sheriff's office um, is not independent, but they have other officers there. I'm there. We're all overseeing this together the chances of a potential cover-up are almost nil when you have that many hands touching the investigation. Um, we're not good enough to be able to, put off, to, to, to pull off uh, a scam of, of those proportions, uh, I promise you. So um, it will be transparent um, and it will be open um, to the public as long as it does not affect the um, the, the ability of, of the investigative agency to, to conduct a clean investigation. That's priority number one. So that without good facts and without good evidence, I can't make a legitimate determination. And that is bad for everybody. That is bad for the community. It's bad for law enforcement. It's bad, bad for everybody. It's bad for the transparency. So we want to make sure that this office gets clean information, good information that I can rely upon uh, to, make an, to make a determination as to whether there was potential excessive force um, used, used in a particular case. So, uh, in this particular case, um, we have uh, a, a Jason Mendez who is deceased, who was shot uh, by two uh, sheriff's deputies um, last Saturday morning. Um, at this time, um, I do not have all of the information. Um, to make a, a um, determination as to whether um, the, the force used was excessive or not, or the, the normal terminology, whether I could believe I could prove beyond a reasonable doubt that the officers did commit some particular specific South Carolina statute or crime. Um, this is a great example of why we will not release the video at this point in time. Um, I hope to have it available early next week, most likely. But we have a video from the hotel showing the incident, and it does a good job of showing the entire incident. We have um, in-car cameras that did not show the incident, but there's audio on all of those. So you can hear the officer's commands. You can hear what they're saying. You can hear the interaction. And so the two together give you a good idea of what happened. Well, we had some technical difficulties with the in-car cameras, and we had to call the manufacturer, and they had to come out and do a little tweaking on the download so that we could have it. We've resolved that issue today, and so we have that today. But issuing a particular video, one video, when there's a culmination of evidence is not beneficial for anybody because it does not tell the entire story. All of the evidence tells the entire story of what actually happened. Um, we do not currently have um, the officer's statements yet. Uh, unfortunately, in this day and age, it is not uncommon for officers to retain their own counsel. Uh, because of uh, the, the, the media responses and community responses, to police uh, shootings, um, police officers now retaining counsel to protect their rights. Um, and in light of a potential investigation against them, these two officers have chosen to do that. Well, as a result, we can't schedule those statements with those officers and their attorneys until tomorrow morning.
that's when their statements are going to be given. Um, so I don't have their side of the story yet um, at this time. Um, we retrieved all the weapons of every single individual who was out there who had a weapon, three officers and two or three security guards. We, 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 we grabbed all those weapons, all the ammunition um, that was available, uh, four shell casings and uh, four bullets. We got all four. So we know we got four shots. That, I, I can say that. There was a fact. There was four shots fired. Um, I've got to get statements, and I have most of the statements from the security guards that were there, lay witnesses who were there. Um, we have a 40 caliber Taurus uh, pistol that was found inside uh, Jason Mendez's car in the driver's seat. Um, so we have, we have a gun that was found inside, inside the car uh, right there. We have, um, of course, uh, Mr. Mendez um, and, and the results of his autopsy as well. Um, we also know that we have his clothing. We know that he had a holster for that gun inside his pants. Um, we found a fanny pack on him that had uh, methan what we believe to be methamphetamines inside of it. We have crime scene photos. We have, um, we need, we're waiting on ballistics of the casings. Um, we have a needle full of a substance that we believe to be a methamphetamine that was found inside the car. It's a full needle um, full of potential drugs that's in there. All of that information goes into the analysis of how we determine whether the officer involved shooting, um, whether there should be any potential criminal charges um, alleged against, against any officers. So we have all that. I've got some of it. I don't have all of it. We hope to have all of it by the end of the day tomorrow or early next week. Um, and then we will uh, be able to release uh, those videos. So as a part of the transparency uh, portion of the protocol that we will follow on every one of these cases, um, that, that should be available. Um, oftentimes, at, at our discretion, we will look to see if bringing in family members of the deceased to see the video because emotions are high, they've lost a loved one. Um, law enforcement has had to engage in a violent act. There's, there's trauma on both sides of this. And um, there are uh, oftentimes we allow the family to come in and view the video so that there's not an immediate anger, um, assuming what the facts are or, or whatever. Um, um, we, we've reached out to the Mendez family. Um, we have not coordinated a time with they want to come in and view the video before we actually release it. We're certainly going to offer that to them. Um, nothing has been scheduled at this time. We certainly offer it. So at this point, so there's, there's two things. So at this point, this how, that's how these things are going to go from here on out every single time. So we're going to control the information uh, along with the investigative agency. The timeline of the release of information will be given to you as best as we can. Um, I, I, I'm happy to update you as, as the, as the uh, um, investigation continues. Um, some cases are more complicated than others. Some can be done in days, some can be done in weeks. Um, we hope to do them, obviously, they're given a priority as fast as we possibly can. And um, we'll maintain that transparency as, as best we possibly can, along with the, uh, the sanctity of the investigation itself. And I think that uh, our communities and our county will be, will be safer as a result of all that, as long as everybody's on the same page and knows, knows the process and procedure of how this thing is going to go. Right. Could you clarify one thing? You said two officers, the coroner's report said three. There were three officers there, but only two fired, is what our initial, our initial analysis is. Um, we got all the guns, we'll double check the ammunition, we'll count them up and lay them out. Um, um, but uh, it's, it's clear from the, the, the hotel video that um, only two officers fired, and there's only four, uh, four rounds that were fired total between the two. What kind of gun was found in the car that Mendez was in? It was a 40 caliber Taurus uh, pistol. That there was what you believe to be meth in a fanny pack and also in a needle? Yes, there was methamphetamine found in a, f what we believe to be methamphetamine has not been fully tested. Again, another, another piece of evidence that um, we don't have 100% corroboration on, but we believe it to be methamphetamine that was found in a fanny pack that was being, weared, that was being worn by Jason Mendez, as well as a syringe uh, that was full of a liquid substance that we believe contained methamphetamine as well, but again, it has not been tested. Yesterday, 
Thank you. Sure. I, I have not spoken with the family. The sheriff's office has reached out to the family on a number of occasions. Um, I think they've spoken to them them once. Um, we're going to reach back out to them to see if they want to to uh, view um, the video at this time. Um, but that has not been coordinated coordinated yet. And, and sometimes it's going to be days before we're able to reach out to the family because we don't know. We have to we have to maintain the integrity of the investigation first. Um, and then secondly, if we are able, depending on how the facts and the circumstances are surrounding the investigation, we'll, we'll allow them to come in in an effort to quell emotions and accusations um, that, that may or may not be out there because we don't want those floating around. We want people to base their, their judgments on facts, not on rumor and innuendo. Well, maybe this is for the chair when he takes yeah. the podium, but um, is there a victim's advocate who would reach out to them? Sure, absolutely. The sheriff's office has a victim advocate, and we have a victim advocate as well. Um, so, depending on on the particular case, um, either one can 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 reach out and, and coordinate that um, with the potential victims. I mean, the the, the victim, um, the family of the deceased. Um, it, at, well, I can't say whether he's a victim or not at this point because the investigation is not concluded. He's a deceased at this point, and he is, it's, it, and it's and it's death by homicide. That's all I can tell you. So the family of the deceased, um, we will try to reach out in an effort of transparency um, to to show them as much information and share as much information as we can at that time. Do you have to be clarified as a victim before the advocates work you, with you? Well, we use our victim advocates to, to do the communication with those involved in a crime. And so, um, no, you don't. And so in this particular case, in officer-involved shootings, we would use our victim advocates um, to reach out to the family of the deceased, not knowing whether they're a victim or not. It doesn't really matter. It's just a term of art. Um, and to coordinate any communication um, between the offices so that they, are, they, they understand you know, what's, what's going on. Um, because I, I imagine it's very traumatic. All they know is that one of their family members um, is now deceased at the hands of, of law enforcement. And that's all they know, and that's, that's, that's a scary thing. I certainly understand that. Mm -hmm. That's going to be how you investigate and handle these situations moving forward. How is that different from previous incidents? How do you handle things in the past? About seven or eight months ago, um, all well, the prosecution commission um, that I'm a member of got together, and we spent a lot of time evaluating and educating ourselves on all the available options for officer-involved shootings, especially in light of the last couple of years, um, which is which has been hectic for law enforcement and for prosecutors as well in in, in regards to officer-involved shootings. Um, have a, we've had a lot of nationwide incidences, and so we really wanted to fine-tune our procedures and processes. And we looked at, we looked at um, district attorneys' offices all around the country and law enforcement agencies on how they handle officer-involved shooting, and we basically have come up with the best practices. And as it turns out, we were using pretty good practices before. Um, one of the major changes that we've made is our communication and making availability of information to press and to, and to family members of the deceased. Um, and that's really the most important thing, and it turned out to be really an issue of transparency. Um, I don't want anyone to think that we're trying to um, cover up or quell or minimize the actions of a law enforcement officer when, in fact, they may have done wrong. At the same time, um, they, they, they need the same benefit of a, of a clean investigation as anybody else. Um, when they're out there, they're out there protecting and serving, and so we're, we're, we're going we're gonna to do it fairly to both sides. Um, so how we handle the, the dissemination of information is the main difference. Um, it's going to be quicker. We're not going to we're not going to we're not going to use our 14 days of FOIA and try to try to come out with um, uh, you know blocking you from seeing something, um, but we may not give it to you either. It depends on the situation, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you why and how and when so that everybody's informed of where everything is in the stages. And then once we disseminate the information, y'all can go back and fact check me and, and uncheck me and recheck me and all the checks you want to do, and then we can have that conversation um, once we come to a conclusion as to the case. So the changes, the process is an ongoing change in process, not well, we, we, proactive, not reactive. Exactly. Yeah. Well, it's, it's more proactive now, and um, I, I feel that it's more transparent now 
um, in, in light of um, allegations um, regarding law enforcement's involvement in, 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 in um, excessive force cases in prosecutors' offices and how they handle them. Um, so we're trying to deal with all those, those, those potential accusations up front so that we don't go down that road. And so we don't have members of our community who are very unhappy about the way things are handled. Um, we feel that if we have a procedure and policy in place up front and everybody knows what's going to happen when something happens, um, then there are no surprises. Uh, and that, and that, so that we can maintain, again, the transparency on one side as well as our ability to conduct an investigation on the other. Is this a response to yesterday's press conference from the family? Not directly. Um, we, we were, it, it, it was a good segue. Uh, because, you know, I, I didn't, certainly didn't know that there would be an officer-involved shooting last Saturday. Um, and so here we are, we have one, and it's time to deal with it. And we're, we're putting together the final touches on our policies and procedures on how these are going to go forward. It's not going to always be the sheriff's office. It might be the city. It might be Simpsonville. It might be Fountain Inn. We, we don't know. But you know the process is going to be the same regardless of what agency it is. And, um, and, and how it's going to be handled. It's going to be the same every single time. Any other questions? Do y'all have any for the sheriff, I imagine? Okay. All right, let's put it. Yes, Sorry, go ahead. The range. the range was in the pack, or where, where was that? It was in the front part of the car. You good? You good? No, uh, I mean, ultimately, uh, the solicitor covered pretty much everything. Um, you know, I think it's important for people to understand that the Greenville County Sheriff's Office's responsibility in this is an internal investigation. That's our job. It's strictly administrative. When our officers or deputies are involved in a shooting, uh, then it's an administrative investigation internally to make sure that we have adhered to all of our protocols, policies and procedures, and general orders. Uh, that's all we do. We're able to, as the department head and as, as, as an internal investigation, we're able to view certain things, but we don't have any of the evidence in this case. We have nothing. This is where SLED and the solicitor's office comes in, and they take things from us to make sure that this is an independent, truly independent investigation that's conducted by a third party. You do not want the police policing themselves. That is not what you want. What you want as citizens of this community is a third party coming in and investigating our agency in the possibility of us doing something wrong. So we, we are to adhere to the same policies and standards and laws as every single one of you in this room and as every single person that's viewing and listening to what we're doing. We're held to the same standard. And by that same standard, we allow an independent third party to come in and do the investigation. It, it will be under this administration. We will absolutely discuss it because it's, it's relevant to the case. It's relevant to what happened. Uh, you know, talking about the criminal history, which is, by the way, public information, as you well know, um, it would have been released whether I said it or not. You guys would have had it walking into the press conference just like you would have had If you didn't have it, you would have had it walking out of the press conference. Um, that, that, is, that will be standard protocol for us, just as we've discussed the call volume at, at certain locations. This is the new way that we are going to do things to be more transparent with the community so that everyone knows what we know at the time uh, that we're talking to you. And that way everyone knows it. As far as the mugshot goes, we didn't have any other picture of it. So that's the, that's the one that we had and that's what was asked for at the press conference and that's what we gave. There is a group, a lot of people are asking about would a Citizens Review Board mm -hmm. work in this case? Would it be beneficial or not? No, ma'am. Uh, citizens advisory, are, uh, we're working on a citizens advisory panel which has nothing to do with this. Uh, that information will go out later and we'll discuss that at a different press conference. Uh, a citizens review board? No, because what would I have to give them that they could review? Again, this is a third party investigation. You would have to defer to SLED or the solicitor's office for a citizens review board in an effort to gain the information for someone to be able to make 
an educated decision on what happened because we don't do an investigation. So that would, it wouldn't even be relevant in this case. For your department, but perhaps for the solicitor? You, you know, it's something we, we can talk about. Um, we, we have to conduct a, a, the criminal investigation first. Um, if, if there is an appetite for a Citizens Review Board after the fact so that we can look at these cases and discuss them mm -hmm. as a community, certainly I'm always open to the conversation um, and, having, and having, having these cases re-reviewed re, re um, for the purposes of moving forward, sure. Um, I'm not necessarily opposed to that, but not while the case is going on. Um, we, we have to have that, that, that independent um, ability to, to, to review it. Um, the information will be disseminated to y'all once the case has been decided and concluded. It'll be foiable, um, most of it. So the community will have it. So the community can have their own independent review board every single day on every single case once the case is concluded because it's public information um, once the case is concluded. If there are charges filed, certain information will be foiable then and then the case will then proceed to trial um, and then the case will be available. If there are no charges filed, then the case will become available through FOIA uh, to, to the community and then they can review it just like, just like I did. So, you know, our community is an independent review board, I believe. What about time span for information? You mentioned mm -hmm. you have this protocol. Do you have a length of time to get certain information together? Well, the independent investigative agency is going to be working as fast as they possibly can. They're out there within 30 minutes of, of the shooting starting their investigation, um, you know, gathering, um, gathering items, taking witness statements. Um, so it's moving quite rapidly. Uh, we're, tr we're reviewing videos as quickly as we can possibly, possibly get them. It's going to be a case-by-case -case basis. This case um, is, is not as complex as some others that we have had, and I can s foresee in the future cases that are much more complex. Um, with the uh, advent of these body cams, I think that the sheriff just received today, according to the news reports, um, we would now have a three or four more body cams that we would also be reviewing and having to deal with, in addition to what we already have. Um, so, you know, it just depends on the particular case and, and what we have and how quickly S SLED can get the investigation done. But I know in my experience, and in particular this case, it's very quickly, and I think that Ten days from the incident to disseminate uh, information is not unreasonable. Um, it could be ten weeks um, in certain situations um, that we've seen, for example, in, in, in national, nationally covered cases. Uh, it's just going to depend on, on the circumstances and the availability of, of the information. Final question. <laughs> Sheriff, um, yeah. you said you mentioned that you have not been able to talk with the family. Mm -hmm. Watching, um, oh, I didn't. Fox, I didn't Fox say. I didn't say that I hadn't talked to the family. Oh, okay. No, no, the that was the solicitor mentioned the sheriff's that. Sheriff's office has, has. We have reached, reached out, out to the family. Absolutely correct. I have. And this not office not. No, no. I have not talked to them directly. Our office of professional responsibility, who conduct our internal investigation into the policies and, and procedures, have reached out to the family on three occasions. They've reached out one time with no answer, the second time with no answer, and the third time they received an answer. And it's my understanding that they went to set up some type of, of sit-down meeting or some type of, of conversation, open up a dialogue, uh, and they were waiting on a phone call back. So I'm assuming the family is obviously very busy in this tragic time. I mean, they, they've lost a loved one. Um, you know, they, they have several things that they have to get together during this time period. So they're, uh, they're probably as busy as, as everyone else is right now. We're open to, to conversation with them whenever they want to have it. But we're not going to have a conversation to give someone part of the story. We're going to have a conversation to give someone the whole story. So it's not until we have the entire story that we're going to sit down and go through the entire situation. I don't, I don't think anybody wants part of the story so they can go out and run to all the news cameras and disseminate half of the story to raise all kinds of problems. Would that, also, would that mean talking to the head? Because I think sometimes people want to talk to the head of the department as opposed to or somebody else. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm open to being involved in that. If they want to sit down and talk with me, that's, that, that'll be an option that they're given. Now, I, I, again, let me be very clear. I'm not going to sit in the room and get beat up by a bunch of people. That's not going to happen. Uh, the phone calls that I've received so far on my voicemail show no reason 
uh, why I, I, they would not uh, have every intention on walking in and cussing me up one side and down the other um, and with the voicemails and everything else that we've received from that family so far. So until that ceases um, and, and until they calm down a little bit, then I'll sit down and have an open dialogue with them and, and explain to them everything. And just let me, let me add to that. Um, it is an emotional time for everybody. And, and in my experience, I've learned that usually a little bit of time um, allows everyone to process the information a little clearer. The information that we have is not going anywhere. <coughs> we have it. We're reviewing it. Um, we're continuing to, to, to capture it and take statements. Um, so there is a requisite amount of patience that everyone is going to have to have so that we do not foster bad information or partial information because partial information leads to incorrect conclusions um, and that's not something that we want to have. However, um, we are certainly open to, to releasing some information to the family in certain instances, um, assuming we deem it okay. And, um, and we're always happy to talk uh, to the families, but in many occasions, um, the family members are oftentimes in a state of anger and unhappiness, um, rightfully so, because they're unaware of what's going on, they have one result, and they know, that they, and they know who caused it. Um, and so oftentimes it's better just to, just to let a little bit of time pass so everybody calms down and so we can, we can um, we can have a, 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 uh, a very good dialogue amongst each other. And again, our process is in place so that we can maintain the community's trust, the press's trust, in a transparent oversight and investigation into what exactly happened. And that's, and that's the goal for everybody. Just so I'm clear, when you say um, third party investigating, is that considered SLED? 99% of the time that will be the South Carolina Law Enforcement Division. But there could be instances where the Sheriff's Office could be conducting the investigation into the Fountain Inn Police Department if they're involved in a shooting and it's not SLED. I mean there are instances where, where there, or if SLED is the one who actually pulled the trigger, then you know another independent agency will have to then, somebody's got to, somebody's got to look into SLED's actions. Uh, so that's why I use independent investigative agency, that's why I use that terminology but 99% of the time it's going to be the South Carolina Law Enforcement Division. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. We so appreciate it. Hey, doing good, man. Hey. You all right? Yeah, I told you, man. You've been out of Up and down. You're looking at the We're going to have to get one from you. <laughs> so, I'll, I'll get you the next time you stop by, I'll take a picture of it. Hey, good. Good to see you. You all right? Yeah, thanks. Thank you, guys. Yeah, yeah.